On June 26th of the year 2000, I woke up to the news that they had sequenced the entire human genome. The Human Genome Project had been working since 1984, 16 straight years with one goal in mind, and that is to map every single gene in the human genome, all 3.3 billion of them. For reference, imagine a house covered with 3.3 billion Christmas lights, and you had to search through every single one of those lights to find the one that gives you heartburn when you eat Taco Bell. That's basically what they had to do, but with every single bodily function. So they make this announcement and I'm watching it on my plasma TV and all I could think was, eh. You idiot! You witnessed one of the most amazing achievements in all of human history. It happened right in front of you and you didn't even know it. Aaron T asks, can you do a video on CRISPR-Cas9 genetic editing? Since the decoding of the human genome, our understanding of the body and disease has increased a lot fold. We can now both treat and prevent diseases that were impossible before. For example, in 2013, Angelina Jolie made headlines because she opted to get a double mastectomy even though she didn't have breast cancer. But what she did have was a BRCA1 gene, which makes a woman 87% more likely to get breast cancer, which is something that her mother, her grandmother, and an aunt died from. There's a good chance that getting that surgery may have saved her life. And it's saving a lot of lives, not just with breast cancer, but with all kinds of diseases. But many diseases don't have a certain place in the body that you can remove to keep yourself from getting it. Diseases like Alzheimer's, cystic fibrosis, Parkinson's, that kind of thing, they're more systemic. For those, you have to do something a lot more delicate. For that, you need gene editing. With gene editing, we can go into the DNA itself and pull out the bad genes and just insert good genes. If we could do that, all it would take is collecting a few stem cells, making those changes in the stem cells, letting them multiply, and then reinserting them into the body to prevent you from ever getting things like Alzheimer's or dementia, even cancer. We could even create therapies for current diseases by putting that DNA into viruses and then letting the virus just naturally spread it throughout the body. To be able to do that would be the holy grail of medicine. But right now, our methods are just a bit too rough. It would be like trying to play the game Operation with barbecue tongs while wearing boxing gloves. What we need is a scalpel that can go in and make tiny little edits right there in the DNA without messing up the rest of the DNA. And at the end of last year, they announced that they may have found that scalpel, and it's called CRISPR-Cas9. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. Not to be confused with his brother, Clustered Regularly Interspaced Long Palindromic Repeats. No, that guy, he's a... Uh... He's a dick. But what does all that sciencey word salad mean? I don't know, but here's how it works. So you know how when you get the chicken pox, you can't get the chicken pox again? That's because your immune system creates antibodies that helps your body to remember how to fight off the disease so that when it comes back again, it easily wipes it out. Well, single cell bacteria have a similar system in place and it's called CRISPR. It allows the bacteria to collect tiny markers of the virus that tried to attack it and insert those markers into its DNA so that in the future it can fight off that virus better. Jennifer Dunda, one of the discoverers of this system, called it a molecular vaccination card. And the mechanism that the bacteria use to cut and splice that DNA is a little protein called Cas9. It's kind of like an old tiny railroad repair car. You know, it travels up and down the track until it finds a place that needs to be repaired and it stops and it knocks out the bad stuff and it puts in the good stuff and then it, you know, goes back along its way and then eventually it runs across a rattlesnake and it goes, whoa! And then, you know, he looks closer and he realizes it's a fake rattlesnake and then he turns around and he sees that some bandits like grabbed all of his money and he's running away and he's like, oh, I've been hornswoggled! <laughs> So that's pretty much Cas9. On a serious note, I would just want to take a second and point out that this isn't like a conscious being that's going up and down the DNA and making these edits. It's literally just a collection of organic molecules being propelled along by exchanging polarities with other organic molecules like gears and a giant infinitely complex clock. It all just worked out that way. But the cool thing about Cas9 is that it's programmable. So if we could program it to say, go in and take out the genes for ALS or multiple sclerosis or cancer, we could cure just about any disease. It could be a standard part of prenatal care. They could just collect a couple of stem cells, run some tests on them for major diseases, correct those major diseases, and then reinsert it and prevent them from ever happening in the first place. Cystic fibrosis, gone. Arthritis in the family, gone. Really pale, sensitive skin, gone. Baldness, gone. Shortness, 
I mean, maybe it could be a little bit taller. I mean, you know, tall people do make a little bit more money. So yeah, sure, shortness gone. What color eyes were you thinking? I was thinking blue. Really? You didn't imagine some, you know, blue-eyed little cherubic little, you know, curly blonde headed, ooh, curly blonde hair. You can see how we could step into some ethical dilemmas here. Most people agree that when it comes to genetic editing, it basically comes down to two things, prevention or enhancement. Preventative is fine. Nobody's gonna argue that we should have more cystic fibrosis or more cerebral palsy, but what about dwarfs? I mean, dwarfism doesn't have any real genetic advantages, but isn't that kind of like implying that dwarfs are bad? I mean, I don't know, isn't, isn't variety a good thing? Would it be unethical to prevent dwarfism? Guys, someday dwarfs could go extinct. It's a dwarf apocalypse! But enhancement is pretty much across the board where we draw the line. Nobody's in favor of that. Enhancing people to be stronger, faster, smarter, the genetic supermen of science fiction, that is a place where things could really go off the rails. So maybe correct a person's nearsightedness, but don't give them telescopic vision. You know, correct a person's genetic deformity that keeps them from walking, but maybe don't enhance somebody to make them an Olympic sprinter. You know, cure a man of Klinefelter's syndrome, which makes him infertile, but don't necessarily, you know, give him a big giant Dirk Diggler schlong. That's, that's, that's just wrong. And unfair. And I'd really feel sorry for the women, you know, if every guy was packing like a horse, wouldn't they all be like really sore? I mean, unless they modify themselves to be, you know. Back on track. The treatment options this presents are absolutely incredible. And in time, we may actually even be able to reverse aging itself. Human lifespans may be about to take a huge leap. This technology is still very much in its infancy, but Jennifer Dunda said that clinical trials and maybe even viable treatment options may be available through this in the next 10 years. I know I just keep saying it, but it's an incredible time to be alive, guys. So let's chat this up in the comments. CRISPR-Cas9, genetic editing, enhancement versus prevention. Is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Does it give you hope for the future? Does it make you think, oh no, we're gonna have a whole bunch of Dirk Digglers running around? If you want to know more about CRISPR-Cas9, you can check out the links I've put in the description below. Thank you, Aaron, for a great question. And if you've got a question you'd like answered, you can hit me up in the comments below or tweet to me at Joe Scott Writer, and I can use it as a weapon of mass mind blow destruction. Thanks so much for watching. Please support this channel by sharing on your social media. And if this is your first time here, I hope I earned your subscription because if you like what I had to say here, then every single Monday I come back with a whole lot more where that came from. All right, peace and chicken grease. You guys go out and have an eye-opening week, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Love you guys.